I know your mind wanders during play, and I know this because my mind wanders too. It is a normal and natural thing. Our brains are naturally going to be wandering away, um, and so we just have to, you know, train it a little bit. <laughs> we gotta get that leash and bring it back um, every now and then. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my seven step process to staying more present during play. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Dr. Jasmine. I'm a clinical psychologist, wife, mom of two little girls. I'm also an author, parent educator, and founder of my private parent coaching community called The Mom Sisterhood. Around here, we talk about everything, child development, positive parenting, and how to keep our own sanity as parents. So um, if you are new here, I'd love if you subscribe to this channel. Stick around. I post videos every week. Also, if you haven't checked out my free resource, which is called The Positive Positive Parenting Checklist Bundle, um, then be sure to check out the link below. It is completely free and it's full of checklists that are easy to print um, that help you handle the most difficult parenting moments like tantrums, aggression, defiance, um, our own frustration and anger as parents, how to stay more patient. Uh, I even have this checklist about how to stay more present during play. Um, so be sure to check out my free resource. It's completely free okay um, and you can easily print out these checklists and have them you know around the house on the fridge or wherever to help you remember right help you bring your mind back to what is important to you because like I said our mind will wander okay <laughs> so we got to bring it back and so these checklists are a wonderful way you know to, to recenter refocus so uh, links will be in the description but let's get into this video um, I love talking about play it is play challenge week and one of the biggest things one of the biggest questions I get is, Dr. Jasmine, how the heck do I stay present and focused? My mind is always wandering. Pretend play is boring to me. <laughs> and I struggle with what to say. I struggle with what to do. I'm always thinking about what I got to do. My to-do list is so long. How do I stay focused? Okay, so that's what I'm going to be getting into. Also, be, be sure to know in the back of your mind, I have a ton of other videos on this channel about play, including pretend play being boring, um, how to, what to say and what to do during play, uh, how to encourage your child to play more independently. So just know, after you watch this video, be sure to check out my play playlist. Um, so let's get into my seven step process. Okay, so I'm going to break down. Okay, this is not fluff. This is not theory. These are not just ideas. Ideas. These are actually a step-by-step -step action of what you can do during your next play session to work on becoming more present. And if you try this seven-step process and it helps you, let me know, okay? Leave me comments down below. DM me. I'm over on the, uh, Instagram at the Mom Psychologist. I love to know um, if, you know, some of these things are helping you guys. So step number one is to turn off all electronics, okay? The phone's got to go. TV's got to go. Even the music can go, has got to go. Maybe some classical or jazz or something instrumental in the background. But if it's got words, it can be distracting. Of course, the TV's distracting. Our phones are the number one <laughs> enemy in staying present, right? We're always getting distracted by our phones. So when you next time you sit down to play with your child one-on-one, -on -one, get rid of all electronics, okay? Put them away. Now you can. And what I'm going to do, uh, number two, step number two, is you can set a timer, okay? You can use your little, you can use your electronic to set a timer, okay? Set a timer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long is your goal to stay focused with your child, um, set a timer for it, okay? If this is something new for you, set it for five minutes, set it for 10 minutes. Um, if, you, if you're a G to this or you want to work on um, staying present and playing with your child even more, set it for 20 minutes, set it for 30 minutes however long set a timer because a timer helps uh give some structure to the situation right it helps you and your child know okay this is when it's going to end okay so you can use one of those and i'll include some links there's the dial timers or you can use your phone to set a timer. You can use the microwave or oven or wherever. Uh, but set a timer for however long you want that play to, session to last. So you can let your child know. They don't really have a good concept of time. So they're not going to really understand unless you get that dial uh, 
dial timer which I will link uh, my favorite one in the description um, but they're not really gonna have a good concept of this they're just gonna know when the timer goes off but of course you can let them know hey okay I'm gonna set a timer um, and then what you do is you, again all the electronics are away the timer is set after that you get down on the floor with your child okay really really important I'm, I'm sure it probably sounds obvious but you want to be down on their level when you're playing with them you want to be able to easily access the toys and see their faces see their nonverbal cues so get down on the floor with them that's step number three step number four is notice what your child is doing okay notice what they are doing with the toys this is so important because I think sometimes we sit down to play and we're like okay I'm gonna get the toys okay you are all focused on what we're gonna do <laughs> um, but what I want you to do is the minute you sit down I want you to start paying attention to your child I want you to start observing them noticing what they're doing and focus on what you see and what you hear okay this is really important to mindfulness um, and so what you want to do is draw your attention to what you can see in the environment what toys you can see what your child is doing what you can hear right what they are saying what sounds they're making just keep bringing your attention back to the present moment keep bringing your attention back to what your child is doing okay so that's step number four and then step number five is make comments on what you observe and when and I talk a lot about this in my private parent coaching community the mom sisterhood I have a whole master class training on play therapy tips what to do and what to say during play but one of the biggest recommendations I make all the time is to sports cast your child which means to describe what they're doing in the moment um, this has so many benefits one of the biggest ones being is that it helps them stay focused in the moment but it also helps you stay focused in the moment right you're commonly not thinking about anything else if you have to focus on sports casting what they're doing and what they're and what they're saying too right repeating back what they're saying um, so this helps them stay in the moment and it's also just a great way to let your child know hey bud I am paying attention to you I am present I am focused right now okay so sports cast what they are doing play by play it's like you know a sports caster when you're watching a game or you're listening to a game they are narrating the play by play what's happening so well that you don't even have to watch the game to know what's going on well that's exactly what you're doing for your child right it's just okay you're doing this and now you're doing this this. and now you're doing this right now if you have an older child you want to mix it in right mix other things in with your language but especially if you have a younger child toddler preschooler they're gonna eat this up they're gonna love it okay they're gonna be like yes I am doing this yes right because they're so focused they are focused on finding their identity they are focused on more independence and so they're gonna love this they're gonna love that you're paying attention to them <laughs> Okay, so that's step number five is make comments on what you observe. Okay, step number six is you want to follow your child's lead. Okay, so you constantly and this is why sports casting is so important because it's really hard to take the lead away from your child when you are describing what they're doing, right? So you just want to constantly remember that. Remember that your role during play is to follow their lead. So you constantly want to be checking in with yourself about, okay, am I following their lead? Am I a couple steps behind them or am I getting too ahead of this, right? Am I trying to entertain them um, or am I sitting back and observing, right? Um, and that's those are important questions to ask yourself and just overall make sure that you are following their lead. You're always a couple steps behind them in the play. Okay, and then step number seven, okay, and this is one is really important if you do find yourself getting distracted because it's going to happen. We're humans, right? Like I said earlier, this happens to all of us. <laughs> Even the best mindfulness gurus are going to have wandering brain, right? <laughs> and that's okay. So what, what the key is, is that when you notice it, and this is why practice is so important because you'll start to notice it e more easily, but when you start to notice that your attention is going away from the play, maybe it's on what you're gonna cook for dinner or some things that s happened earlier in the day that you're stressed about something that is not in the moment when you're when your mind starts to wander what I want you to do is bring your bring your mind back to the present moment okay so you're gonna bring your mind back to what you can see and what you can hear right what you are observing in the moment and go back to sports casting go back to saying what you are observing go back to following their lead basically go back to the other steps okay step number seven is to 
return back to those steps over and over and over and over again, offering yourself lots of compassion, knowing that this is completely normal and that all that means is that you just keep practicing, right? And keep noticing, keep practicing and keep noticing. Also, putting in the back of your mind, wow, okay, these are some things that I need to attend to, right? These are some things that um, keep coming up in my mind and that I need to spend some more time reflecting on, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, um, so those are the se seven steps. I'm going to go over it again. Okay, number one, you want to put away all your electronics. Number two, you want to set a timer, five to 20 minutes or longer. Number three, you want to get down on the floor with your child. Number four, you want to notice what your child is doing. Focus on what you can see and what you can hear. Number five, make comments on what you observe. Number six, follow your child's lead. And number seven, if you notice that your mind water wanders and you get distracted bring yourself back to uh you know what's going on in the present moment what you can see and what you can hear okay i hope that was helpful now again like i mentioned earlier be sure to check out my play playlist because i have video on how to encourage more independent play i have a video on how to navigate pretend play i have a video on how to set better boundaries around playtime um and so many other videos so check out that playlist i'll link it in the description below um and also in the comments let me know what other questions you have around play i'm always i always love to talk about play <laughs> um, and so let me know if you have any other questions any other concerns that come up during play I would love to know in the comments below be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you got any value from it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one bye